What's up, guys? I hope you're all doing well during this time. I hope you are persevering through school. As of right now, it seems like you guys have a week left. So congratulations. Most of you are almost fixing to be done. Um, you're, you got this. Just keep going at it. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is to remember to be looking at the small group discussion guide with these lesson videos. They usually are sent out by me as well as Betsy, so be on the lookout for those. It's great companion pieces to these lessons. Um, you can watch these lessons and then look at those questions afterwards. You can look at them with your parents or you can look at them by yourself. It's, it's whatever works best for you, but I wanted to remind you guys about that. So today we'll be finishing up the Moses Lesson Series. This is the fifth lesson of the Moses Lesson Series. And we've seen Moses throughout this whole time go through some crazy moments in his life and deal with some impatient Israelites. But last week we saw a side of Moses that we hadn't seen before. Moses, after 40 years of leading God's people through the wilderness, was understandably frustrated. And in the moment of his anger, he sinned. Moses sinned. He was living based on previous encounters he had with God and refusing to obey God in the present. Moses started to take credit for the great things that God was doing for the Israelites. That's what Moses was doing. And because of his disobedience and the lack of trust in God, Moses was kept out of the promised land that he had been working to lead these Israelites toward for the past 40 years. And that's where we left off last week. And if we ended the story right there, it would seem like Moses displeased God and that he was pretty much done. He was pretty much done. He couldn't enter the promised land. So what was the point of continuing to serve God? How would Moses be remembered after this? Would it be someone who messed up and would forever be known as a screw-up? Well, let's see what the writer of Hebrews had to say regarding Moses. This is what Hebrews chapter 11, verses 24 through 29 said. By faith Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood, so that the the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. By faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as on dry land, but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. So in today's time, Moses is forever remembered as a great man of God, despite having his problems, which let's face it, we all have our problems. Moses is still known as someone who was dedicated to the Lord. So how can we be people who will be remembered as individuals who loved God? What's standing in our way? For Moses, although he was raised in the royalty as the adopted son of Pharaoh's daughter, he knew that in order to truly follow God, he had to get away from that lifestyle. Although he was raised in luxury of Egypt's palaces and had been promised all the things that a lot of people would strive for, the world would strive for, Moses refused Egypt's fame. Perhaps he would one day be Pharaoh's successor, but he had been born as a member of God's chosen people. Moses had to make a choice. He could either hide the fact that he was an Israelite and maintain his position in the king's court for a few short earthly years of fame, or he could choose the plan that God had for him. Instead of being remembered as a line or two carved into hieroglyphics on a tomb, Moses is now memorialized in God's eternal book. Instead of being found in a museum as an Egyptian mummy, he is a famous man of God. So is there anything standing in the way of you doing what God wants you to do? Has music or dance consumed your life to the point where it's become a priority over going to church, or, or spending time with God? Has basketball or football got to the point where it's what you want to be remembered for in your school, as opposed to being remembered as someone who loved God and was willing to lay everything else down for God? 
has getting good grades turned into your obsession instead of obsessing over the love God has for you? I'm not saying music, sports, computers, or any of that stuff is bad in itself, but I am saying that if those things stand between you and God, then you have a decision to make. Something that I love doing is writing as well as playing sports, but I don't want to only be remembered for writing a story or making an epic catch whenever we'll all be back playing football or basketball or whatever it may be. I don't want to be remembered for that. I don't even want to be remembered solely for loving my family or being a good brother or a good son. I want to be remembered and known as someone who loved God, someone who loved God and pointed to the living water, pointed to Jesus, like we talked about last week. Quickly talking about Moses, when the Israelites were about to cross into the promised land and Moses knew he would be dying before that time, Moses spoke to the people with a word from God. This is what Moses said. Moses said in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Moses is a man who, like us, made mistakes, but who wanted to be known as a godly man. And he instructed his people and us to love God with all of who we are. So here are some key things we can learn from Moses on how to leave the right kind of legacy. The first thing is treasures and suffering today are nothing compared to future rewards. Moses turned his back on treasures in Egypt. The palace and position that the Egyptian lifestyle offered him were worthless in the light of eternity. And Moses realized this. Being loyal to God and loving God's people were valued by him more than the combined wealth of Pharaoh. He knew that these were the things that would count one minute after he died. Gaining wealth, fame, and success on earth mean absolutely nothing once you die. You've never seen a U-Haul trailer full of all the materialistic things you've gathered attached to a hearse as they carry your body to the cemetery. He didn't say this about the U-Haul trailer, but Jesus actually talked about this in his Sermon on the Mount. If you look at Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21, Jesus says this. It says, Jesus said, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. But not only are our treasures nothing compared to our future reward, but the suffering we encounter as believers is nothing compared to what is in store for us in heaven. Romans chapter 8 verse 18 says this, For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. All the sufferings and the difficulties of today, the sickness, pain, disappointments, injustices, mistreatments, sorrows, persecutions, and any trouble of any kind is truly insignificant compared to the blessings, the privileges, and the glory that will be given to Christ's followers in heaven as we spend eternity with him. The question we have to ask ourselves is, are we pointing to Jesus? One of the cool things I love about Moses' legacy is that he pointed to Jesus. In John chapter 1, verse 17, it says this, For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. God gave us the Ten Commandments and many other laws through Moses. These laws commanded humans to obey and condemn them to death if they had failed. Before Jesus came to earth to die for humanity's sins, God's people, the Israelites, had to maintain their relationship with him based on these laws. All throughout Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, animal sacrifices were required to pay for your sins. These laws helped the Israelites remember that they were sinners and couldn't save ourselves. Moses essentially pointed to the need of a Savior who could be the ultimate sacrifice, and that Savior turned out to be Jesus. Who would have thought that someone who lived long before Jesus and was leading people through the wilderness for 40 years could point to the future Messiah, but he did. 
we too need to point others to Jesus. We touched on this last week as we saw that Moses, in his anger and his frustration, considered himself the source of water for life for all the Israelites as he struck a rock with his staff, as you can see in this illustration. But now we see that same man as one who is setting the world up for a savior. Looking at the law of Moses helps us recognize that we need God to rescue us, to rescue us from the consequences of sin and the need for a relationship with God through Jesus. The question that we have to ask ourselves is, how will I be remembered? How will you be remembered in your school? How will you be remembered with your friends, with your family, with your whole life? Will people remember you for your talents, for your skills, for your friendship? Will they remember you because of how you made fun of them or treated them when they were going through a rough time at high school? Or will they remember you as someone that helped them get closer to Jesus? Everything else, sports, music, acting, good grades, all of that is good, but in the scope of eternity, they don't have an impact like sharing the good news of Jesus. So the question is, what kind of legacy are you leaving? I want to leave you with that question to think about as we close out in prayer. So let's close out in prayer. Heavenly Father, again, thank you for letting us be here today, Lord. Even though we are not physically in this room together, I'm still very grateful for the media and the means that we have here, Lord. Um, just be with each individual that is listening, Lord, whether it's middle school or high school or parent or whoever, Lord, whoever's listening, be with them and and open their eyes that that you are the one to guide them, Lord. You are the guiding force in their life to follow what you want for them, Lord. I ask this for the same thing for me as well, Lord. Be that guiding force in my life and, and help open my eyes to that, Lord. I ask all this in your name. Amen. Well, that's the end of the lesson, guys, and that's also the end of the lesson series. This is the end of our Moses series, and we'll have another great lesson starting next week. But one thing I want you to remember is that we have these devotional times on Saturdays from usually 4 p.m. to 4.30 p.m., something around there. Um, it's, it's a great gathering time. We get to catch up with each other. We get to get to have a great devotional and, and great, great prayer time. Um, but I wanted to remind you guys about that, and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.